right, so it is currently day two of CES. I took the first day to walk around some of the different floors and get acclimated as again, this is my first CES, a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, but basically right now what I wanna do is take you around some of the cool things that I saw, such as the Intel Falcon drone, some of the things that they have at the DJI booth. Um, and I also wanna show you some of the things they have at the Autel booth. Uh, but really quickly, I wanna turn you guys around. Uh, this right here is my hotel and right over there is the convention center. There, it finally focused. Right over there is the convention center. I'm like literally probably a half a mile away. is at Stampede. They have Pro AV Solutions. They also have a sort of drone market here. They sell drones. And I'm here to see the Intel Falcon 8 Plus. It's kind of hard for me to actually show you guys, like hold the drone up because it's sort of tied down. Um, so I'll include some B-roll over as I talk about it. I learned a little bit about it. It seems to be very expensive between $25,000 and $50,000 depending on the payload that you add to the drone. And this is because you're basically paying for the software. Uh, he was telling me a little bit about some of the analyzation that it can do as far as business solutions are concerned and I guess industrial solutions are concerned. And it seems like it can do a lot. It seems like um, you know it can analyze a wall and see if there's any cracks from day to day. That was one of the examples that he gave me. But another cool thing is that this camera can look straight upwards. And this is something that the new Matrice drone can do from DJI if you mount the gimbal to the top. But this one, you don't even need to move it around whatsoever. You can either look straight down or straight upwards. So that's something I really like about the payload. And also, again, about the payload, um, he said that it's sort of like hot swappable, so if you unscrew the back, you can actually take the payload out and you can switch to different payloads. So this one uh, is actually for imaging. I think it has a 32 megapixel camera on the front. It really depends on whatever A7 you're using on the front of the drone. And there's also an option to use a FLIR camera. Uh, and the camera on there as well can zoom in 30 times. That FLIR camera, as you guys know, FLIR does the thermal imaging, which is gonna be perfect for certain solutions that you might need in business. Another really cool thing is the actual controller. It's called the Intel Cockpit. It's huge. You actually wear a full backpack and full harness when you use it and it sort of has these two metal prongs that's what the harness actually attaches to it comes with a windows tablet and as of right now that's the only tablet that you can use with the cockpit they don't even call it a controller they call it a cockpit um, and he also said that you can actually just use the right stick to fly the drone so you can spin it around from side to side move forward if you need to so this is one of the only drones that you can fly with just your right hand another thing that the intel drone has is hot swappable batteries which i am a huge fan of there's two separate slots in the back they don't have the batteries inside right now for me to look at but it does have flight time between 16 to 26 minutes uh, so this drone is definitely awesome as i said the price point is between 25 to fifty thousand dollars again you're really paying for that software that you're getting with the drone but i think overall if you are someone who's looking to do business with a drone or i guess uh you know more of industrial work with your drone such as inspection and surveying this is probably the one that you want to go with Alright, so I realized that it was really loud in that booth, so I figured what I'd do is shoot a bunch of video, walk back to the hotel room, um, and then from there, I'll pretty much go over everything that I saw. Alright, so it's definitely a bit quieter in here. So anyway, after I checked out the Falcon 8 Plus system, the Intel Falcon 8 Plus system, which was the very, very expensive drone, I headed across the way to the Autel booth to check out their newest drone, Evo, which was actually released at CES on that Tuesday, January 9th. It was flying around in the drone cage, and this looks to be a Mavic competitor. It has the same form factor. It folds together, although it does have a few more bells and whistles. It's able to shoot in 4K at 60 frames per second. And it also has infrared sensors along the backside for obstacle avoidance. Uh, I made a full video on this if you guys want to go and check it out. It was sort of like my first impressions. I'll leave a little link in the top right corner and also put one down in the description.
Another new drone that I checked out was the Rise Tello. A lot of people seem to think that this is the DJI Tello, when in fact, it's made by Rise, but it has some DJI tech inside, as well as some Intel tech inside of the drone itself. Like the Evo, I made a whole entire first impressions video on this, so I'll leave the link in the top right corner, and I'll also put a link down in the description for you guys if you want to go and learn more about this drone. Basically, it seems to be a starter drone or a beginner drone. The price point is at $100. We're looking at a springtime release of March for the United States. And again, this thing can fit in the palm of your hand. You fly with your smartphone, and this would be perfect for anyone who's looking to get into drones and doesn't want to go out and spend a lot of money on their first drone on something like a Mavic or maybe even a phantom oh boy all right so the next drone I checked out was the GoPro Karma and I know that this is nothing new but it's the first time I've seen it in person and I've been able to actually hold it and kind of uh, handle the drone and feel it with my own hands all the other times it's been behind a display case at Best Buy so I figured I'd put this in the video and it's kind of like a big drone just because of how bad it is um, I would love to fly one don't get me wrong I think that if they drop low enough I would go out and buy one just to make some videos on it and kind of maybe do like a little reflection video on it um, but anyway these things got recalled I'm pretty sure the discontinued as of now, GoPro entered a space they should have never been in. But I do have to say that Karma Stabilizer looks awesome. And if I had one of the newer GoPros, I'd probably invest in one of those Karma Stabilizers. I mean, they had this video on display on one of the screens at the GoPro booth. And this guy biking on his mountain bike going down a hill just looks so, so smooth. It's incredible. Another thing I was able to check out while I was at GoPro's booth was their Fusion camera. They really didn't have too much hands-on with the Fusion, and there was like a guy standing next to the Fusion the entire time, so I really couldn't do much with it. He explained some of the different features that it has. Uh, one of the things that actually stood out to me was that it has a SD card slot for either camera, so you need to use GoPro software to stitch it together to actually get that 360 image, which seems a little bit weird to me. I'm not sure if other 360 cameras work like that. I'm actually not all that familiar with 360 video and VR. I'm looking to get a little bit more up to speed on that. But anyway, the Fusion looks pretty cool. I think at the price range, it's a little bit too high for me, but it's definitely something I'd like to check out if I got the chance. Now, I want to wrap this video up with some of the things I saw at the DJI booth. Of course, they released some new products, but I want to go over some of my favorites, first of which was the Inspire 2 with the X7 camera. This instantly drew my attention. It was like the first table that I went to as soon as I got to CES, and they also had this thing flying in the drone cage. Again, it is a straight beast. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the X7 camera, it's their new camera in their Zenmuse lineup and it costs around four and a half thousand dollars, which is more than the drone itself. So now this rig, if you want to get the drone and the X7 camera and all the lenses that it comes with, is gonna run you about seven and a half thousand dollars. That is a lot of money. Moving down the lineup, as far as DJI's drones are concerned, I also checked out the Phantom 4 Pro Obsidian, which has no difference between the original white Phantom 4 Pro except for a different paint job. Although I have to say, that paint job looks absolutely awesome. If I had to do it all over again and I had the choice between Obsidian and the white, the original white color on the Phantom 4 Pro, I'd go Obsidian every single day of the week just because it looked awesome. It has that same color scheme as the Inspire 2 and it just looks incredible. I also think it would probably be easier to spot when it's up in the air just because you know when you have that white against the white clouds it's a little bit tough but I think black again would definitely be easier to see and overall I would always go with the obsidian over the white Phantom 4 Pro. Now the final two things I want to share with you are two new things that DJI introduced first of which is DJI Copilot. This is something that they really didn't release or really didn't tweet about put on their Instagram. Um, it's something that was kind of tucked into the corner of their booth but I found very interesting and I'm so upset at myself because they had it on display for one day and I said oh I'll come back and check it out later get some video of it but it was gone. The table was empty so I got some video from the screen that was behind the display. Essentially what it is is a hard drive that you Bring with you. It's actually made by Lacey. You guys know I love my Lacey hard drives. Um, and what you can do is plug your SD card right into it and offload all of your footage. So it's kind of like a NAR box. If you guys have seen one of those, it's a portable hard drive where you can plug all of your media sources into there, like USB drives. Um, you can plug in again your SD card, your micro SD card, anything that you might need. Plug it right into there and then plug it into your tablet or smartphone and view those files. It's perfect for anyone who's going to be flying a drone on the go. 
And finally, last but not least, the DJI Ronin S. This is their DSLR stabilizer. It's sort of like their gimbal for a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera. So essentially, if you think about the Osmo Mobile 2, it holds the smartphone. This thing will hold your camera. It was very heavy, and I really wasn't able to get all that much footage of it. I wanted to make a video on it so badly, like a standalone video, a first impressions video, like hands-on. But again, this table was mobbed for the entire day, and I really wasn't able to get a good, clean shot of the Ronin. With that being said, they always assured me whenever I asked a question about it that it was a prototype. This is still in the prototype stage. They've got no idea when it's going to be released. They've got no idea what the price point is going to be. I believe that they were saying it's going to be around Q2 of this year that we'll see the Ronin S go on sale. And they also said it's going to be sub $1,000. So whether that's like $800, maybe $900, or even $999. So that still counts as sub $1,000. Again, we should see this in Q2 for sub $1,000. Anyway, that wraps up my coverage from CES 2018. I had a blast and I'm already looking forward to next year. If you guys missed any of the videos I made from CES 2018, I'll throw the links down in the description for you guys to check them out. And I just want to give you guys a huge thank you because without your support on the videos that I've been making, I wouldn't have been able to come to CES. I mean, really the reason I was here is because of my YouTube channel and my love for technology. And again, I want to thank all of you guys for watching my videos. But guys, hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.